Hello everyone and welcome to episode 22 of Let's Play Dead Space. As always with me is my co-host Dalton. Say hello to everyone. Hello. And once again we recorded the rest of the game and there will be two more episodes after this. We recorded the rest of the game uh, and streamed it live on Twitch. For some reason OBS did not record Dalton's half of the conversation. So we are going to post-commentate these remaining episodes. Unfortunately, this does mean that we lose the uh, audio commentary. We uh, this does mean that we lose uh, in-game audio, but that's a sacrifice that has to be made in order to be able to have a conversation that flows well enough and makes sense, right? Yeah, true. Kind of annoying. Kind of just disjointed. If it was the other way around. Yeah, kind of annoying, but there's not much else we can do. I do, I for episode one, I did add the game's soundtrack to the background. Or for episode 21, rather. I did add the game's part, the music from the game to the background, and I think that worked pretty well. I don't you just know. need a little ambiance. Helps yeah. it. Yeah, I, th I think it filled it out more, because otherwise <coughs> you and me talking and literally nothing else, and I think that, I personally, I think that might get a little bit boring if it was just the two of us yeah. yammering and literally nothing else to fill in the background. Yeah, you need something to fill out the void. Yeah, and I watched it, I did watch the episode, and I thought that worked fairly well, honestly. I don't know if you did. No, I haven't yet. Uh, well, uh, it's on the channel, uh, if you want to. I, so, I don't always watch whatever videos we've recorded. Sometimes I do. Obviously, if I'm doing like a heavily edited video, I'll watch it before it goes up on YouTube to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Like a video review or something. Yeah, true. I'll watch it once I get done editing and just and I've done that where like I got done editing and I watched it and I still missed a mistake and then I noticed it later when I was watching it on YouTube I was like fuck am I gonna have to delete this and re-upload it or is it so small that I just don't care <laughs> yeah. that's like the worst feeling yeah, this is where I started upgrading the uh, flamethrower which was uh, and I got most of the upgrades on the flamethrower done I'm Every single time you do a New Game Plus run of this, it gives you a bunch of power nodes, if, if I'm correct, because it did for this New Game Plus run of it that we that I did here, um, which I think it probably gives you enough to finish off what I didn't fill out for the for the flamethrower, which basically means I'd have like two other guns, the Force Gun, and I don't remember what the other one is. Plasma rifle. Yeah. Have those two to yeah. upgrade. Well, I, I think doing... the yeah the flamethrower is your last one you have to do I think. Yeah. Like fully anyway. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, I, we should have mentioned this in the last episode. It's October now, so happy October, everybody! It's spooky month. It's spooky hip, spooky time. And I'll say this: just because we're starting off spooky month by finishing off. Hey, let's play uh, a uh, horror game. It does not mean we're going to skip out on doing our yearly horror game for October. One-off let's play horror game for October 31st. So you will get your annual Halloween video then. Gotta decide what that's gonna be. Yeah, we do need to decide what that's <laughs> gonna be. Last year we did Killer Seven. Uh, we'll we'll fi we'll figure something out. We'll do something fun. We always do. Oh, yeah. And. Oh. Another note about that, just because we uh, do a Let's Play of it, for Halloween, it's a one-off, does not mean we won't go back and do a full Let's Play of it at some point. So, like, let's say we decide, oh, let's do another Resident Evil or Silent Hill. There's a very good chance we're going to go back and Let's Play that Resident Evil at some point. Yeah. I want to do more Resident Evil, especially if you know it well enough so that I don't sit there and fumble for 45 minutes with some incredibly obtuse puzzle yeah. because that series is known for that shit. Yeah. 
I, I'm, I'm afraid of being a backseat driver, a backseat gamer in terms of the Resident Evil games. I'll, I'll just try, I'll try and point you in the right direction, but I don't want to like give you all the solutions to the puzzles and kind of take away from your experience. I think. Yeah, some of the puzzles are easier. Like the puzzles where you have to press the buttons below the pictures, and it, it's like yeah. cradle to the grave. That one. That one's not that difficult to figure out. If you pay close attention to the descriptions of the pictures, it's not that hard to figure out. Yeah, because they're not really too hard to uh, get the hang of. Especially Resident Evil puzzles. Because Silent Hill has more emphasis on, like, riddles and shit like that. And Yeah, Silent Hill... Well, Silent Hill's... Uh... What, even though it plays similarly, it still feels like a very different beast entirely mm -hmm. because of mm -hmm. the nature of its scares and stuff like that. Yeah, d different type of horror, different type of emphasis on what the game is trying to do and the, like the gameplay in general. It's a very lot right. more subtle. It's yeah. a lot more subtle. And, and there's nothing wrong with either approach. I, I personally think Silent Hill is uh, the much scarier franchise. Oh, definitely. That's without question. Uh, but but you, I, obviously, I like Resident Evil. I've let's played. We, we've let's played two of them at this point. And God damn it, I need to go back and I need to do separate ways. We promised we'd do separate ways, and we haven't done it. Cause yeah, it's not too long either, so it shouldn't take too long to record. Yeah, it's it. like uh, it'll. We'll probably bang that out in five it's, six yeah. episodes. It's only five chapters, and they're pretty short too. I do remember it being pretty good, though. I've only played separate ways once, but I remember it being a pretty damn good addition to the lore and story and presented in that game. It has a superior final boss, I think, in my opinion. Uh, the final boss of, your, <laughs> of Final Fantasy... Uh, Final Fantasy, yeah, what am I thinking? Uh, yeah. Resident Evil 4 is kind of weak. It's not one of its better it's, moments. It's, I think it's a tad too easy. I mean, it's a, it's a nice like it's a nice looking boss in terms of Resident Evil standards, yeah, but it, like, in the terms actual of art design, yeah, it's a cool looking boss. But it's just I think it's too easy. The one in separate ways is a lot more challenging, I think, in, in general. But yeah, the the fight against Jack is a lot harder than the fight against the final boss. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, Krauser fights one of the hardest in the game, I think. Yeah, Kra Krauser oh, no. can be kind of tough. Especially, especially since he's got like that one-hit fucking kill that he does, and he's mm, oh yeah, where he just like sl slaps out his wing or whatever it is, and just yeah. chops your head right off. Yeah, shit's annoying. Yeah, because there's there's actually like the best way to actually come come about that fight is using your knife the basically the entire fight because like I think I think knife attacks do the same amount of same amount of damage as like a magnum shot does. It's really weird. That is really weird. It's, it's, it's house bosses. Magnum has always been the uh, OP handgun in that series. Yep. Like, you could take if you save your Magnum shots in Resident Evil One, you can take down what is the final boss? That tyrant. Uh, Tyre, yeah, tyrant, yeah. You can take him down in like three or four shots. It's it's <laughs> not much. It's really fucking easy to get him down with that. Of course, then he pops back up and tries to attack you while you're trying to escape on the helipad. Yeah. That's tougher. But yeah, like, the, depending on what ending you get, because I think if you, if you... If you save any of the, like, the characters you come across, you have to fight the Super Tyrant at the end. But if you, if you just do it... If you don't rescue anybody, like, you just complete the game. It's, like, a really unsatisfactory ending, but... I, I don't think I've ever done it so that I didn't rescue anybody. I've yeah. always tried to rescue everybody. It's a good, it's a good ending to get. It's a lot better, I think. Yeah. Doesn't the helicopter pilot from one die in two? Yeah, he di he dies in um in three. Yeah, Nemesis kills him in three. Brad Vickers, he's the helicopter pilot. Yeah. But he's is there a worse? I I probably probably joked about this before. Is there a worse job in the world than helicopter pilot in a Resident Evil game? <laughs> yeah, really. They all fucking die. It's like <laughs> yeah. Poor Mike. Yeah, Mike freaking ripped. Yeah, he can't he can't deserve. get you a beer if he's dead. Poor Mike. Hell no. After all that shit. Yeah. And that's the fate he gets. Shot down by <laughs> one single Ganado with a fucking rocket launcher. Yeah, really. Ah, oh, man. 
Yeah. I'm still I'm still feeling it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fucking I don't get why some Resident Evil fans don't see how four has a horror atmosphere. Like if it, you don't, it really does, yeah. If you don't find it scary, that's fine. Like I don't even find the ones that people find scary to be scary. <laughs> I don't either. Personally, yeah, I don't either. But if you don't find four scary, that's fine, but how can you play through that house of the how can you play through that Night of the Living Dead section, for example, where you're fighting all the Ganados trapped in the house with Lewis and not go, yeah, this definitely has a horror atmosphere. You know? It's, or, yeah, it's definitely there. Or, or the, the parts where you, uh, oh, Jesus, look at me, I'm fucking surrounded. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> or the parts of the game where you, uh, have to deal with uh, the Iron Maidens and the. Uh, oh yeah. What's the other one that? The regenerators and. The, the yeah, the regenerators. Maidens. In my opinion, they're the fucking scariest enemies in Resident Evil. Yeah, they're one of the best. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're without a doubt one of the best enemies in the series. I think, in my opinion, especially the Iron Maidens. Yeah, fucking <coughs> like. The breathing just unnerves me, dude. Like yeah, just the breathing. the The music is really good too, as well. Yeah, it goes along with it. And their movements, so just their general, just how they move, and like in, in general, just like so weird and like uncanny and creepy. Yeah, the way they move reminds me more of a Silent Hill enemy than it does a Resident Evil enemy. Yeah. If I'm being honest, which I mean, I, yeah, I think that's why it's as good as it is. Because Silent Hill enemies always have some weird, unnatural way. I mean, look at the look how the fucking nurses move. There's nothing natural about it. Yeah, it's like very stiff, like a, as if they're like in like rigor mortis or something. Yeah. Because they're struggling to move. Yeah. Their, their movements are very jerky and unnatural, and I'm about to fucking die. <coughs> Fucking tentacle! I thought I got rid of this thing earlier. So uh, we were talking about baseball, and I don't think we, I don't think we got to the AL last time. No, I don't think so. So the AL for the wild card, it was the Oakland Athletics versus uh, the Tampa Bay, and I didn't really pay attention to this game. I know Tampa Bay won, but beyond that, I couldn't tell you much about that game in particular. I could. I don't pay attention to the AL that much, so. Well, I this do is on you. because. Uh, <laughs> My local team, the team that I drive 20 minutes and I can go see them play, is in the AL, so... Oh, yeah. So, I primarily watch the that, so... Yeah. But, uh, that was, uh... Oakland and Tampa Bay. And I, beyond Oakland winning, I couldn't tell you much about that series. Yeah, really. Yeah, or that one game. It was a wild card game. But it's wild card games are a one-off thing. Uh, yeah, it's and true. and then it was uh, th then the ALDS proper was um, the Twins and the Yankees, and that went about as well as I thought it would. Which is to say, the Yankees swept the Twins. <laughs> yeah. It's not how I wanted it to go, but it's it's about how I figured so, it would yeah. go because the Yankee the, the Twins coasted into the playoffs on the back of setting a major league record for home runs in a single season. That's how they got to the playoffs. They won 100 games doing that, but once you get to the playoffs, if you don't have stellar pitching, you're going to get fucking smacked. And that's what happened. The, the, yeah, game, the games weren't even close. The Twins weren't even in that series. It was just an ass whooping. So, yeah, the Yankees pretty much had that from the get go. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not surprised by that. I'm just disappointed because I fucking yeah. hate the Yankees. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, the game, the the game against the Astros is happening right now as we speak. So we'll see how that turns out. Yeah, I hope the Astros win that. Uh, but I was gonna. That. Okay, so the Astros played Tampa Bay, and this series didn't go how I expected. Because I was expecting the Astros to uh, either sweep or win it three games to one. I thought at best Tampa Bay might squeak out one win against the Astros, but they dragged it to all 
but credit to them, they did drag it out to five games, and it w didn't look like it was going to happen after uh, the first two games in Houston, because Houston won both of them. Yeah. So I thought, oh man, we're headed for a sweep, aren't we? And then the uh, the Tampa Bay pitching showed up big time in, um, in games three and four in Tampa Bay. And then I was like, now I'm not so sure the Astros are actually going to make it to the second round. I think that pissed off the Astros, though, because they won the last game like seven to one. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't the quite yeah, no. the ass kicking that the Braves got, but it it certainly wasn't close. It was yeah. Uh, it was up there. Pretty big ass whooping. Yeah. But uh yeah, so they they are currently playing the Yankees. They're actually mm -hmm. playing it right as we're recording this and God, I hope they beat the Yankees. Please beat the Yankees. I don't yeah. want the Yankees to win another fucking... They've won 27 of them, god damn. They don't, they don't need another one. <laughs> they, yeah. they, they're, they're pretty content with what they got, I'd say. Yeah, but you, you know how Yankees fans are. It's like World Series or bust. It's like, yeah, true. It's like all they expect is a World Series win at this point. Yeah. Top of the six right now, still tied. Yeah. But... Game one didn't go how I wanted it to. The Yankees no. took game one. Uh, I don't know what to expect from the National League. It's a, it's it's getting interesting. Yeah, it's like one last two games. Yeah, it's the Cardinals versus uh, the Nationals, and I wasn't expecting either one of those teams to advance to the second round. So I mean, same here. Honestly. I am. At a loss as to how to predict and call that one. Because I think all the commentators are saying they're betting on the Nats, which is, I mean, I mean, I guess I am too. And not just because I'm a fan, but just because I, it's like the, the fact that they made it this far, and the fact that they never made it this far in general, just maybe something's going to happen. Like I don't know. Yeah, maybe they're putting together some just, kind of like miracle run yeah. kind of thing. Like, uh, what year was it the Rockies? Surprise everybody by getting to the World Series with uh, Clint Hurdle as their uh, manager. I don't remember. It beats me too. <coughs> they, that they did the whole miracle run thing. Yeah. And every once in a while, you'll get a team that like nobody expects much of in the playoffs, and suddenly they find themselves in uh, in the World Series. I'm always rooting for the underdog. I think that's one of the main reasons why I don't really like the Yankees because they're not really they're not underdog at all. I mean, they're like the Yan the New York yeah. Yankees. Like, they're one of the big <laughs> teams. They're the yeah can uh, can afford to just buy high price players anytime they have a um, yeah. With uh, and sometimes I kind of fucking hate that it's that way because. Uh, that means it's frequently certain teams are just ridiculously good every single yeah. year and it doesn't change much from year yeah. to year. And, yeah, you, and you don't get the uh, you don't get like a very often you don't get the things where like the Cubs won the World Series a few years ago or uh, the Kansas City Royals won the World Series a few, a couple of years before that. You don't get that kind of thing too often because those are smaller market teams, especially yeah. the Kansas City. Yeah, true. I don't think anybody was expecting Kansas City to make the World Series two years in a row, but hey, they won one. Oh yeah. And their uh, their uh, manager retired, so you know. Good luck and Godspeed to him. Yeah. I just think I just think those like teams like in the World Series just make makes for a better game too in general. It's a more exciting game. It's like if it's like the like the Yankees are in there, it's like okay, and then there's a good chance the Yankees will win. It's not really that as exciting as it would be if it's like the Nationals 
with like the Astros or something. Like, I don't know. Yeah, well, it's gonna be the Yankees. Or the Yankees. It's gonna, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Well, the, the Astros are in the American League Championship Series for like the third or fourth year in a row. They they've been the most dominant uh, National American League team for a while, especially during the regular season. Like. They only got one World Series out of it so far, but that window ain't closing for a few years at least. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially now that they got Zach Granke starting for them. It's so going like, to be interesting. Add one more to your absurdly good pitching staff. They have like the 1990s Atlanta Braves kind of pitching staff where the 1990s Atlanta Braves pitching staff three of them are in the Hall of Fame that's how good their pitching it, yeah. staff was that, that is ridiculous they don't, they don't have to worry about anything for a while how, how are we looking on time we like, still got ten minutes hey zero gravity section I kind of like the zero gravity section like it's, yeah, it messes with your orientation, though. It's a good yeah, it's a good feature to add in uh, in the survival horror game because you can't really add that specific feature in many other games like this. It really fits well with the atmosphere and the general like setting of the game. Yeah, I kind of really like the the uh, deep spaceship and deep space setting for a survival horror game. Like, I think it works extremely well for like both this and Alien Isolation. Yeah, because. Uh, where the fuck do you run to? Like, yeah, really. If you are, if you're being chased through the house, you can fucking leave the house, run down the street, run to a police station or something. Mm -hmm. If you're being chased through the mall, you can. You know, there's plenty of places to hide in the mall, stuff like that. And but if you're stuck on a spaceship, you can't fucking leave. Yeah, really. Stuck in deep space. It, you're gonna leave on a small ship stuck in deep space, and there's gonna be the chance that the monster's gonna be have crawled its way over to you, and then what do you do? You just can't do. It's very hopeless. Like there's not not much you can do. Yeah, I think it's one of the just, scariest ideas for a survival horror setting. A, yeah, hell yeah. And, and it works great in this game, and it works just as well in Alien Isolation. Alien Alien Isolation is an entirely different kind of like. Oh yeah. Because while you can you can eventually defend yourself against the uh, the xenomorph, you can't really kill him. No, yeah. You just gotta hide and hope he doesn't <laughs> find your ass. Yeah, you, you spend a lot of that game crawling on your hands, crawling on your knee, on like your knees or whatever, because uh, you're scared that he's gonna fucking find you. Yeah. It has similar uh, mechanics to like Clock Tower and Haunting Ground. Like you have to hide, like, hide in lockers and hide under things. And yeah, I think that makes for a better horror game in general. It's just yeah. like it's more hopeless. And yeah, seriously, guys, if you have never played Alien Isolation, I highly recommend that you do. It's about yeah, the it's only great. complaint that I have heard people lodge against it is that it's a little long, which. It, it is a pretty lengthy game, being like 15 to 20 hours, so I can kind of get that. But it, it personally, it didn't bother me, because I was enjoying it so much. Yeah. I also heard that the save system's a, a gripe from a lot of people as well. It doesn't have auto-saves. Yeah. It has manual saving. Yeah, it has manual <laughs> saving at save points, and that bothers a lot of people. And I get, I get that. Like, a, for a lot of games, it's like... Why don't I just... Why, I have a hard drive on both of my fucking consoles. Why can't I just save anywhere? Yeah. You know? I think that, yeah, I think that makes for a better, like, atmosphere, too. It's like, you, you, it, it makes you want to, like, not want to die even more, you know? Because if you auto-save, like, all the time, it's, like, it's not like, really as intense as it would be. Yeah, it, but I think it, I think for Survival Horror, I think you're right. It does work better because you get, like, save scum at, like... Oh, yeah. I'm going to save, and then I'm going to advance just a tiny bit, and then save, and advance just a tiny bit, and save over and over. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like Doom in a way, because, I mean, you, you, if you, like, auto-save or quick-save in Doom all the time, it's like, it kind of takes away from, I don't know, it just takes away from 
the atmosphere and whatnot. Yeah, I like in Doom. I usually like to try to beat uh, levels in one go. If I'm playing yeah. By myself. Yeah. Same here. And I'm pretty fucking good at doing that too. <laughs> I mean, when I did my Doom Let's Play, the very first Let's Play on this channel, it was, uh, uh, there was, I think, two levels that I had to save in the middle of and couldn't beat in one go. It's like, yeah, like Chasm or something like that. It was, uh, two, two levels that were in, uh, episode four. Oh yeah, episode because, four. Yeah, because episode four is fucking brutal, and they it was. Uh, what is the second level? <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, that's a, a good question, actually. I know. <laughs> I, 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 can, I can see it in my fucking mind, but I don't. I'm trying to remember what what it was called. Hatred? Perfect Hatred, yes. I had to yeah. save in the middle of Perfect Hatred. Perfect Hatred is fucking brutal. And you don't start with That's much ammo while. either, because if you do, if you try to kill everything in the previous level, which is what I did do, you have very little ammo going into Perfect Hatred. Yeah, because the first level is kind of brutal, in terms of first levels are concerned. It doesn't really... Yeah. Hold up on the enemies. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, it is difficult. Like you have to know how to kill all the enemies in the first level. You have to know yeah. how to do it. It's almost like a puzzle you have to solve in order to kill all the enemies in that level. And Just then, guys. Ooh. And then the other one that I did was um, the the one with. Uh, where the where you have like the big elevator leading up to a teleporter that depending upon which side of the teleporter you enter it teleports you to four different places yeah, that's and then you've got and then you've got the cyber demon that blocks the exit and he's standing up above the rest of the level and if you're anywhere in that center area he can fucking hit you because you, you take a shit ton of damage from his attacks, so you gotta watch. Yeah, <laughs> and I damn near beat that level without saving. I damn near did it. Um, but I got down, I got to the point where he was the only enemy left in the level. And I was stuck on one side, and I had to cross a couple of bridges to get to a invulnerability, which I was going to use to BFG spam his ass. Yeah. And I kept dying. I would spend 20, 30 minutes clearing out everything at the level, get to that point, and die. And I did that five or six times in a row. And then I was like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm just yeah, going to fucking save once I don't get to risk that point. It. And once I get to that point with that bridge where I have to cross it to get back to... The, and then I did that, and I eventually managed to evade his uh, rockets and kill him. So I only saved once in that. Yeah, I, w I would have saved two. I don't want to risk something like that. Yeah. That, that level's. I mean, I, li I like that level in general. It's kind of a neat level, but yeah, like, it's, it's, it's also very hard <laughs> at the same time. Well, almost all. Like for some reason, the easiest level in in. Uh, Thy flesh consumed is the bonus level. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. yeah. So I gotta play that again. It makes me want to play Doom again. Yeah. <coughs> well, we're not gonna be playing Doom for a while because again, yeah. delay. Yeah, delay. It bigger, but I guess yeah. they gotta do what they gotta do. I, I mean, better to have a delay game than a shitty one. Lesson oh, yeah. fucking learn. Yeah, but hopefully they, hopefully they actually 
adhere to that when they make uh, or when they're when they're finished making Elder Scrolls Six. Hopefully, it's a finished game. Yeah. Because the hype train for that game is pretty big, so. Yeah, Elder. It's gonna be a while though, because I think they're doing um, Starfield or whatever it's called first. Oh yeah, the new IP. That's right. Yeah. I forgot yeah, I think, about that. I think they're doing Starfield first, uh, which. Which I'm ex I'm excited for. I'm, I'm I'm excited to see a new IP come up come along. Yeah, I want to be excited, but they haven't said anything about it. What like, we have no gameplay. We have nothing. Like I literally we have absolutely yeah. nothing. It's like I literally don't even understand like what the general even like. In, I have no idea what it even is in general like at all. It's an RPG. That's all I know. In space. Yeah. Not even a teaser or like any type of like concept art or anything. Yeah, it's an RPG in space, and that's about all we know. About it. <laughs> well, we hope it's an RPG because it's a, uh, oh yeah, uh, they have like they like to strip RPG elements out of it to the point where many, many, myself included, would argue that Fallout Four is not an RPG. Uh, the less said about seventy six, the better. Yeah, tr <laughs> true, true shit right there. Uh, God, that game's depressing. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, let's wrap it up. So. Thank you everybody for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below. It will be greatly appreciated. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye everybody. See you guys.